we swerve to the left. Uh, we swerve to the right, right? And three, two. Uh, yeah, that's right. I'm trying to get scoliosis today. <laughs> <laughs> I guess welcome back, right? Is that a Migos ref? Or is that a, was that Offset? Who said yeah, that? Uh, I think it was Offset. My back got scoliosis. scoliosis cause cause I swear, swear to lane. Swear. That's how you drive. <laughs> Dude, if your steering wheel is down here, just <laughs> get that shit checked. No, bro, some cars are like that, though. Really? Yeah, like, um... Buses. Like the old, uh, the old Hondas, the, uh, is, what is it, the S800s or something like that? They're so tiny. That's the problem. They have, like, a motorcycle. They originally came with a motorcycle engine used a chain to actually... <laughs> I'm not even kidding. To, like, that, you know on a bicycle when you pedal, you see the yeah. chain? Imagine that, but it's your car. My like, God, dude. Call that and so it's, innovation. It's so <laughs> yeah. tiny, like, for modern Americans. Like, so when we sit in it, it's like this when we drive. Whoa. Yeah, yeah same. so the, the seat is not adjustable? Oh, God, no. Oh, my God. God, no. Yeah, no. Dude, we're talking about a car from, like, the uh, dude late 50s, early 60s. Yeah. We have different selling points now. Oh, yeah. Could you imagine selling a car without a cup holder? Yeah. Or, or how about whoa, this? Whoa. How about this? When you go value back... goes down, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. But um, when you go back in history, like, uh, this is why I love channels like, uh, do you know Donut Media by no. chance? So they're a car channel. They make great content. You should definitely go check them out. That's a donut, like, you know, yeah, food, donut. media. And okay. um, they have a series, like their first, one of their first series called Up to Speed. Mm -hmm. Dude, it's so great. Like they just talk about a car or like a specific manufacturing part of um, like of a car. So for example, they did like an Up to Speed on Mercedes. And then they did one, I believe on like Kawasaki for motorcycles. And they have one for like every major car company, yeah. like every important car. You know, they got all the shit. They're great. So they did one on F-150s, right? Mm -hmm. And they were talking about when they first came out, it was like the F-100. Yeah. They were like, yeah, they started to modernize because they added armrests. <laughs> right? Whoa. Exactly. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, like, this, ch this changes everything. We live yeah. in a different time, dude. If we don't have Apple CarPlay, all bets are off. Yeah, we're like, dude, I, f I feel like cars used to be this this little bubble thing, and then they would literally mount couches to it. And no, seriously, that was pretty much it. Or it's like a, you go back to we've talked about it a couple times on the show, but the Model T, it was a wood frame. Uh, Could you imagine yeah. using wood on a car today that's on the exterior, or better yet, a structural component <laughs> yeah. of the vehicle yeah, you, itself? Oh my god, dude. Right? Right. It's like pre-sanding, dude. Or, uh, no, no, pre-buffing. Uh, <laughs> no, they were still buffing. They still had the, uh, they still painted the cars and stuff like that on the outside. Yeah, but... But, <laughs> but it's like they had wood rims. <laughs> <laughs> That is so funny. <laughs> and now it's like, uh, <laughs> if it doesn't have a four-star uh, crash test safety rating, yeah, Apple CarPlay, uh, preferably heated seats. Mm. Those can be an option for some cars. Yeah. Um, what else? Yeah. No, I think now it's just like more than one oh, cup holder. If you don't have a backup camera on your car in the U.S., it's yeah. illegal. Exactly. <laughs> because I, I started thinking about it actually last time, and I'm like, there's a lot of cars out there, right, where they're just... They don't have um, the blind spot uh, sensor. A lot of cars have them now, but there's still a lot of cars where it's just, it makes sense to have them, but they just don't. Are you talking about new cars? New cars, yeah. No, new cars, they have to have a backup camera. Do you mean the sensor? Or I'm, just... I'm talking about the side mirror sensors for the blind spots. Oh. You know what I'm talking okay, about? The, yes. The beep, beep, beep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I will say, sometimes they do not work, man. And I think it's because probably the car is too dirty or something like that. Like, maybe I should just stop being such a lazy piece of shit. And just actually check your blind spot. Or, like, you know, actually wash my car every once oh, in a okay. while. Like, <laughs> watch your blind spot. <laughs> eh. Now, the thing, I look in my blind spot. Like, if I turn into a lane, I will always look in the mirror. Yeah. Because that's, like, your... That's definitive, mm -hmm. right? It's there. You can adjust your head a couple different angles to really make sure no one's there. Yeah. And then you merge over, right? There's a couple <laughs> times where it's, like, you need to just double check. Yeah. Quick look, good to go. It's like when everyone's going ninety, and then there's trucks around you. You're like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna trust this sensor right now. But I, what I think is very humorous is the people that drive with like extra caution. So they check their blind spot like this. Signal. <laughs> like the entire, like the entirety of the car is just it's in like check. Every time they go to drive, they're taking a DMV test. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
both you hands of the steering wheel. Yeah. Do you, wait, did you have to do the uh, driving school things where you had to go out for three lessons with an yes. instructor? Mm -hmm. So um, d did your instructor, like, did they teach you the tips or give you any tips and tricks for when you're taking your DMV <laughs> test? So here's my how my experience went. Okay. 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 So it was uh, some older guy. He was really funny from what I remember, and he was Persian. Okay. This guy came through with a white Corolla, and he was just like, nice. come on in, you know, I'm pretty sure you've driven before, you've stolen Baba's car. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I know, you know I'm Arab, yeah. cool, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I get in the car, and then he's like, okay, we're going to make this short, and we're going to finish this in one day. And I'm like, and I will just write you off for the rest of it, like, we'll just hmm. finish it. I'm like, okay. He's like, so I'm just going to walk you through what the DMV asks for. <laughs> so true. And I'm like, right on. Yeah, I don't want to waste time. <laughs> I'm trying to drive tomorrow. So uh, the guy's like, okay, both hands on the wheel. And he's like, they really, really, really check. Especially yeah. blind spots. He's like, make it very exaggerated. It's ridiculous. That, yeah. That's what my teacher told me. She's like, do it to the point where it's, it's actually almost unsafe. Yeah. Because you're not looking in front of you for something. Mm -hmm. You're going to be focused on every move. Just, you know, act jittery. And I was like, what? They're like, yeah, act jittery, but make sure your your hands are positioned in the perfect spot every time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. I did that. I failed my test, and I had to take it three times. <laughs> you took it three times? Yeah. But I did finish the class, technically. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I took it three times, um, mainly because of, like, usually the ending of the driving test. So I'll do good throughout, mm -hmm. and then the ending, they'll just, like, prop something like i remember my second test was stupid because she was like all right we are oh no you missed the school bus i was like what school bus and they were like yeah there's a school bus right there it's across the street on the other side and it's hidden by a tree and it has a stop sign on and i did not stop <laughs> so they prop a bus dude and i was like f this city i'm going somewhere i'm, I'm going to fullerton <laughs> should have gone to laguna bro like that's yeah the hardest part about them is um is the double stop in the beginning. There's like, if you don't see it, you could totally miss a second stop sign and mm. lose, or like, lose. You could <laughs> fail your driver's test within the first, like, two minutes yeah. of it actually starting. But um, It's crazy that city to city differs. Yeah. Like the test. Seriously. Like, I know a lot of people came to the Laguna, I think it's Laguna Niguel, if I remember correctly. I forget which one, but... um. Oh, in the, in the Hidden Hills. Yeah. yeah. Or it might have been Laguna Hills. I don't remember. I think it is Laguna Hills, actually, Could be. now that you've mentioned it. In the Hidden Hills. In the Hills. Yes, sir. Coming um, in the Hills. In the Super Snap. Feeling like a bomb stone. So, I just got something to say real quick. What's and that? I can... I can finally eat during the day, and <laughs> and I haven't been. Why? Why? Why is that? <laughs> Would you like to explain to the viewers? Yeah. As to why? So, in case you're wondering, we just came out of a very lengthy month, mm -hmm. and it was called. It's a very important. Month. It was called May. No, I'm just kidding. It was. <laughs> no, we're not. We're still in May. What the hell's wrong with me? Anyway, guys, I've been brain dead for about a month. <laughs> Dude, why the lack of dead? water? Why have food, you been brain dead? Because of Ramadan. There you go. Yeah. So it's a it's a spiritual month. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I really connected with myself. Um. But I will say that it's very hard when you're thinking about food because your stomach is just going insane all day. And the worst part is not even water. <laughs> but yeah, it's over, guys. And I have not been drinking water or eating during the day still because my body is used to that. <laughs> but we're going to change that today, right? We're going to get some panini grill after this or what, dude? Oh, are Ooh. we actually? Because I'm, I'm pretty We could either do that, that dude, we could do tacos, <laughs> we could do tacos, we could do whatever the hell you want, man. Oh, we're going to spice it up. It's going to be good. The best stand in town. Order Postmates with us on this episode of the two. Exactly. Didn't mean to make you guys hungry, but Taco Tuesday's around the corner. I'm not even hungry. I wasn't before this, but I am. <laughs> God, You're welcome. He said Panini Grill, I'm like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love mating calls. That's what I realized. Mating call? Yeah, like mating calls. You know that mating call? Well, I, I would consider it a mating call. Hmm. The she, And then, like, just say it at a random target, okay? Just, you know, shop around, you know? And then just, out of nowhere, just go, she, And then see how many people respond. It is beautiful. You know the best place I've noticed to do it, actually? Where? Ironically enough, the driving range. 
Ooh, I swear to God. Okay. Like if you're walking down the driving range, because there's a lot of like younger dudes there that are all trying to play golf and like yeah. flex for their chicks that they're bringing with them. <laughs> they have like no idea how to play. They'll they'll yeah. swing, crack every disc in their spine yeah. on the way up. They're like, you see that go? And it's like it didn't leave the tee. Shit. Okay. She was she was paying attention. Fuck. She wasn't on YouTube. Yeah, the ball's right there, Buster. I think that was your spine. No, but if you walk past those dudes and you just go, she like. There's a really high percentage chance that you're gonna hear a little. Shit yeah, I love that it, it's somewhere. It's higher pitch, dude. It's like it's like a choir. You're just like shit, and some other guys like shit. <laughs> That's the call and response. That's how so, you identify. Yeah. The asker's the lower pitch. <laughs> Did you hear that? Shit. Shit. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, dude, you know what? It, it's time to stop. It's time. It is time. It's time. I agree. I'm, I'm really sick pissed of off it right now. It's disgraceful and it's driving me insane because I don't need to wait in line this long for certain people. All right. So I was in line. I hear you. At a lovely establishment uh, ordering some coffee. A local chain, mm -hmm. which I actually don't know. I, it might be nationwide. I'm not entirely sure. But I, I'll call it a local chain. And <laughs> I just went in for an iced coffee, right? Yeah. And there's two, two gentlemen in line in front of me. No problem, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Why would it be? Here's why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for it. So the dude who's ordering, right? Yes. Is, uh, with the girl at the register... She's being very nice, very accommodating, answering all of his questions. Mm -hmm. And here's what has to stop. The questions. All right? I get it if you walk into a restaurant, you know, like that has a, an extensive menu. Mm -hmm. For example, um, Cheesecake. Cheesecake Factory. And you got Thank questions. You. Yes. You're like, okay, does this have, for example, if you're vegan, you're like, how vegan is this? Right? Because <laughs> some vegan people just want to make sure. They're like, I'm sorry, I, I can't have any kind of sugar that's part of my vegan diet. Yeah. <laughs> so they got to make sure. Yeah. This guy wasn't vegan. He just, <laughs> he just genuinely wanted to know from what it sounded like every last detail about everything on the menu. It wasn't even out of a curiosity thing. It was just like <laughs> a, it was more of like a, this guy's like, I want to gauge my choices and better under better what? understand what the full establishment <laughs> has bitch, to offer. This isn't a culture. It's not <laughs> curious. It was more of like a. It almost felt like he was commandeering time towards the end. Yeah. Okay. Because here's why. Here's why. Right. <clears throat> he was stealing time from everybody else. When you get to the point where she's like, "What type of milk do you want?" Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Well, what type of milks do you have?" Valid question. Very valid question. Yeah. So she's like, "We have oat milk, uh, almond." Uh, you know, whole milk, lactose-free, coconut. And he's like, so what makes your coconut milk so special? That needs to stop. Yeah, dude. It's coconut milk. Move on. What the hell? Move on. Was, yeah. Because not only did he ask about the coconut milk, he had to ask about the almond milk, and he needed to ask about the region where the coffee was <laughs> grown, and he needed to know exactly how the coffee was processed because his name was... His name was Sacramento, and he needs to know every last detail about where his coffee is sourced it's, from and is handled and needs to make sure that it's eco-friendly and green. Yeah. It's, dude. Why don't you just ask if it's from Banff and just call it a day, dude? Dude. Don't ask about... <laughs> you did this whole loop to find out one... one and, you're trying to ask one question. Better yet, you could have read about it online yeah. and not wasted time. Or <laughs> maybe this chick's not into you. Dude, I'm and not just even... call it a day. Like, okay, I get it. If people are like, if you were in line for five minutes, that's ridiculous. And I'd be on your side, right? Five minutes is not that long of a period of time. But it wasn't five minutes. It was 20. What? I checked my watch three times. It was this... 20 minutes went by. And yeah. the dude in front of me, like, he was getting restless as shit. He's like, really? Like, he yeah. just said it it's, out loud. That's in consideration, dude. Yeah, to he's just being a Others dick. around you. You know how this place is operating right now. Okay, you're not getting served. I mean, what do you expect from a guy who's named Sacramento? <laughs> what a sack of Romeno, dude. That's Hi, my name's my name's Santa Sacra. Barbara. Yeah, dude. My name's <laughs> <laughs> My name's Rodeo. My name Oh no. 
My parents named oh. me Bel Air. And yeah, that's one word. That's yeah. my full first name. Okay, Bel Air. Please. Dude. It's time to like, stop. It's time to stop. Yeah, for Because real. what that really is a practice of, and you already said it, is selfishness. Mm -hmm. That's just like a, oh, everything's about me now. Yeah. I'm taking no, I'm not taking anybody else's, anybody else's time or what else they got going on into consideration. Mm -hmm. That was the word you said. Yeah. So there's a difference that, between point of sale and your personal server. Exactly. <laughs> okay. It's, You're not getting your own table right now. There's a <laughs> line of 16 people behind you. Coffee should not take more than two minutes to order. Oh Get the hell out of here. Dude. Okay. It has not changed. Okay. I don't care if it's that cat shit coffee. But it was good. It was actually pretty good. Yeah, coffee. yeah it's good. But at the end of the day, coffee is going to taste like coffee. There's just better coffee. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Okay. Either ask about the milk because you have an allergy or shut the hell up. Dude. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you have a, if you enjoy various types of milk, mm -hmm. right, and you're like, oh, I know that I like almond with certain things mm -hmm. and soy with others. What you do is when you go to a new coffee place, you ask, oh, do you have oat milk by chance? You don't ask about every type of oat milk, or sorry, every type of milk, where all of the milks are from, how each of them was produced. Because yeah. that girl doesn't even have all the answers to these questions. Yeah, and then I, she, it's it going to lead like to she, more BS answers. Yeah, well. it sounded like she was kind of just guessing. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Is this is it gluten-free or, like, gluten-free? Is you your know? oat milk gluten-free? I don't know. Is oats Are oats gluten-free? Yeah. Does, does the oat milk have any pulp? What are you saying, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Pulpy oat milk? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I first like of reduced all, pulp for yeah. my oat. <laughs> <laughs> all right, first of all, ew. <laughs> Second of all, there's people behind you. <laughs> Why do I feel like that would just be the the equivalent of getting like a cup of a cup of milk, pouring a little bit of oats in it, or grinding up the oats first, putting them in there, put that shit in the microwave, or boil it in a little pot, and that's it. Yeah, there's your oat milk, <laughs> <laughs> or just call it fucking. Uh, Inflated cereal, I guess. Just saggy, soggy cereal. S soggy, oh, saggy. Oh. You got your soggy, saggy cereal. Well, <laughs> well. It's the soggy, saggy <laughs> cereal. The so the Kawasaki saggy <laughs> cereal. 150 cc. <laughs> oh man! So I heard you. You have a story for me today. What's going on? Oh, that was the story, man. Yeah. That was, was the story? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was so heated. I didn't. I'm so hear sick right of these that. inconsiderate coffee drinkers. <laughs> yeah. Not worrying about just, other people's time. Dude, okay. It's coffee. Drink it and move know on. Know what you want. <laughs> know what you like to drink. Is it the whole right? point of drinking coffee? Is it to move on? <laughs> much to ask. <laughs> to get. Don't talk to me before my coffee. This, what happened to this? This dude is in his mid 30s. You know what the fuck yeah. you like to drink by then? Like, yeah. if you're still discovering your drink preferences. Indecisiveness, dude. I'm 22. I know <laughs> I like. A black iced coffee. Yeah. Can we le just do? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. I got something for you. How about this? Huh? <sighs> okay. So I actually came across this the other day. It was a thought that I had. And guess when I ha had that thought? At 2 a.m. Exactly. And that's why we're the 2 a.m. podcast. <laughs> but <laughs> without those thoughts, I have no life, man. Anyway. I, it went, I, I was talking to this person, and I was trying to sell them on a product. I wasn't actually selling the product, like per se, like physically. Mm -hmm. But they were asking me for advice and like what my opinion is on a certain specs for a computer, okay? Hmm. I do not know this person well enough, but <clears throat> halfway through the conversation... <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. sorry. I have severe sinuses and it's pissing me I got off. sinusism. Sinicism. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> tinnitus. Um, tinnitus. <laughs> yeah. So halfway through the conversation, I'm, I'm trying to genuinely help this person. And I'm like, this is what I would get. You know, I was looking for I7s and beyond, whatever, blah, 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 certain specs. And halfway through, I'm like, why am I helping this person, dude? It seems like they're not appreciating what I'm telling them. And they, they come off as coming out very rude, almost. Like, their responses, they'd be like, oh, yeah, 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 I know that, but 
like, and I'm like, okay, then why are you asking me for help? Because if you ask for help, I'm going to provide answers in a simple manner, right? So that you would able to be, to be under, like, to understand it. No, I get what you're talking about, and I'm going to be rude, and I don't really care. I, see, <laughs> see, that's that's where I come in, and I'm like, I don't care. Because you're the one coming here, okay? Ooh. But do you see what I mean? Which brings me to a note that I had noted. The I notable thought about, note. Yeah, the notable note. I actually sat in bed, and I thought about that situation again, and I was like, okay, how was I helping this? How was this person just, like, being, I don't know, let's call it vulnerable, in a sense? To a field that he doesn't know about and then is asking me these questions and I am giving him like simple answers for him to decide on what product to buy. And then when I respond to him, it seems condescending or very rude, even though I'm like, what the hell? I'm just trying to help, you know, or I didn't I didn't come to help you. You asked for help and I'm giving it to you. I have a theory, <clears throat> but I'll get to it after your story. I noted this tone. Turns out he was not rude. It's just the way he spoke and his tone communicated something completely wrong to me. Even though the, the words that were coming out of his mouth were not necessarily rude, it came off as rude. And tone was just like, that has to be it. And I was going to ask, I'm like, should we give him, you know, a little bit of the benefit of the doubt because COVID, you know, we've been inside, we're starting to open up. If you've been fully vaccinated, according to Gavin Newsom, you're allowed to, uh, have you're allowed to take that mask off mm -hmm. and in most circumstances not all you know because he wants to be a little safe but so people are getting out there you know they're starting to you know refamiliarize themselves with the outside world yeah. again more frequently what was it like two years ago you know yeah time. but at the same time i was gonna say should we give him that benefit of the doubt but at, before covid people were still dicks yeah. So why does it matter? <laughs> like, why should we give them that benefit of the doubt? Yeah. Well, in general, I think it's it's nice to give people the benefit of the doubt because yeah. we really, 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 truly don't know what's happening in their personal life. Mm -hmm. You know, what we see is what, what we get right now. I meant that specific COVID but, bailout. Like. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't. But I mean, not not for COVID. Maybe give them the benefit of the doubt for something else. Exactly. That's That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But come on, we've all been inside, man. <laughs> I was going to, I had the theory of, and the only reason I have this theory is because I, I'm part of it, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but I feel like some people just don't know how to ask questions correctly, right? Like, for example, if I have a question for a teacher at school, mm -hmm. right, like, I, I'll never know how to answer it other, or how to ask it other than just saying, oh, how do I get the answer, which is never the question you're supposed to ask the teacher, Right. You have to ask them some conceptual questions and then you break it down and you sit there as they spout off the knowledge to you and you sit through about, you know, five to ten minutes or whatever. Yeah. And then you finally get to the nugget of information that you want. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was me for a long time. Was I threw out all of that theory and all that other stuff they were telling me beforehand and I just listened to how do you plug the numbers into what to get what you want. But the thing was, I should have been respectful for that little bit of knowledge and tidbit that they were giving me beforehand, because that helped me solve the problem. Yeah. Right? Because the way my brain processes things is it's just like, I don't care about the name or how it works. I just need to understand what the numbers are, where to get the numbers, and how to plug the numbers yeah, in. Yeah, because you're concerned about finalizing it. Exactly. Yeah, and getting the con just concluding. But the thing is, you need to know about that process, yeah. right? So when somebody asks you for something, what they really mean is, don't give me the fluff, give me the direct answer, right? But mm -hmm. they don't want to ask for the direct thing because that yeah. feels rude. Like you said, how do I get the answer? Exactly. That is, well, I mean, I guess that is a valid question. How do you get the answer? But I think you're right. We should train our brains to ar articulate at least what we may understand and where we don't understand anymore. Yeah. Right? And I feel like that is more respectful to a professor, for example. And it's like, it all ties in, well, I'm going to sound like an old man again, it all ties into like our generation and being addicted to this because, I mean, we're at full, we're like running at high RPMs because of this shit, right? Just yeah. constantly engaging, doing blah, 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 blah. So we don't care about the fluff, but the fluff is almost the most important part of it because, I mean, at least with the uh, professor example, right? That's all the theory, the know-how, the understanding. You're like, he's explaining uh, not only where you get the numbers from, but what the numbers actually represent, right? 
And so at least in my classroom setting, now that I pay attention to what I've called the fluff, mm -hmm. right, I understand the class better. And okay. so I feel like in that guy's situation with you, it's not a class, it's the real world, and he just wants to know the answer to this thing, but he doesn't know how to directly ask that. Yeah. Right? Because maybe he understands steps one through three, but he doesn't understand step four, and he just wants you to get to step four. But in order for you to get to step four, he has to ask you a question about, like, step one through three. Does that make any okay. sense? Okay. Because it's for, like, for... Yeah. Let me, let me give you, like, a music example. Somebody would ask, um, like, okay, how do I make how do I make my bass stand out in a track better? Mm -hmm. Right? I could say something like, um, uh, well, the first thing you should do is throw an EQ on it. Oh, I already know about that. Like, I know about EQs. I know how they work. I know about all the different types of bands and different types of filters you can use. Okay. Yeah, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, cool. so I don't need to, why am I even talking to you about this then? That's yeah. what it feels like, right? Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, they understand what an EQ is to a degree they understand what the uh, filters and the different bands and the areas on the eq are right mm -hmm. and so all an eq is is you change the frequencies of a specific instrument or basically just selected piece of music or audio and you can change the frequencies with different filters so it's like oh you want the bass to be louder you go down to like the 200 ish hertz area and you can boost that yeah like just a little bit right and so now your bass stands out a little bit more the bass is a little, a little bit louder Right. So this guy's like, I get how EQs work and I filters. I'm like, why the fuck am I even talking to you about this? Same thing you, that happened to you, right? Yeah, it gets it it pushes you to like a whoa. Yeah, like, you're like why, why am I why am I slightly getting attacked? You're like, or, why like, am, why am I even <laughs> helping you if you're gonna be a dick? Like that's what it comes down to, right? <laughs> yeah. So you're standing there and then you give them the nugget that they want. Mm -hmm. And the, the instance of this EQ thing, it's like, okay, you get the um you get the uh low the uh, low pass filter, or it's called a high cut. Or sorry, uh, high pass. No low pass. I'm low, thinking of a low, low pass, pass filter. Yeah, low pass for low the pass high filter. End. And then okay. uh, what you do is you drop that somewhere in like the 10 to 15 hertz range. That gets rid of a lot of those unnecessary, like very very low end frequencies that can mm. mess up like iPhone speakers and some car speakers and stuff like that. And then you boost the bass just a little bit. You know, you'll hear it and it it'll sound better. And then maybe you want to. Uh, use what's called a uh, high shelf attenuation which means you're not completely getting rid of the high the high end you're just lowering it and so you do that and then that leaves room for like other instruments to come through a little bit more clearly in your mix and then what you should do is throw a utility on it i know what a utility is i know how it works okay did you know you should put that on your track and put your bass into mono because it reads better or it plays better on instruments when you do that mm -hmm. no i didn't that's really interesting same thing right so he didn't understand, like he knows about utility, he knows about the EQ, but it's that last step that he doesn't get. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. There's also another problem, I think, with t like tone and, and just communication in yes, general. Yes, 100%. Especially in the past couple of years. <laughs> okay? Um, it seems to me like there's like five, maybe... 15 different languages of English at this moment, you know, there's yeah. the, there's the freaking, um, like the whole, uh, what is it? Is it Gen Z language where it's just like, I think so. No cap. You capping right now, boy. <laughs> she, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, what is that, man? I can understand it, but it's just like, why is that a form of communication? Like, like imagine just growing up and just, you know, you hit 32 one day. And, you know, you're with your girl's parents or whatever. And you'd be like, yeah, ha, ha. you know, she, you know, like you're just, you're, you're still that person because that's the only language you know. Uh, it's I just, know. It, it's so kind of cringy. Well, here's the thing, right? If you, if that's all you speak, right? I, I, I don't know. Like it, high it, school it, lingo just stuck with you till you're 48. It depends on the situation, though. Like, sometimes it can crack me up. Like, sometimes if the professor or, like, if somebody who's older, like, understands how to utilize it properly. Yeah. And it doesn't feel cringy. Utilization. If you know how to yeah. in input it into something, but it's not, like, your actual life, I think you need to just have, like, that business language in a sense so you can talk to all sorts of kinds of people, not just little clicks. Yeah. 
<laughs> and it, yeah, you know what? It's also situational too, because if you're in a business meeting, yeah, and like somebody's giving a presentation yeah, on something, it's and like they, your boy got a sixty percent this week. <laughs> your boy, it's like aha, uh-huh, uh-huh. all right, hear it. This hear is what it. we got. Check it. Uh, <laughs> so this ROI. It's been it's been rising, bro. Like, no cap, no cap. <laughs> that should be hitting the ceiling. You're gonna be celebrating after this like a bitch, and you're like, yeah. okay, what? facts, facts, no copies. <laughs> like if you work for a Fortune 500 company and you're saying that shit, it's yeah. time to one. How did you make yeah. it that far? <laughs> she say that again. Facts, no scanners. <laughs> it's like, dude, you can yeah. create a you can create a uh, asset <laughs> report better than anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> It's like this dude creates value <laughs> on a level. <laughs> like Damn, any- we got all sorts of assets, but the ET is silent. There's <laughs> <laughs> no extraterrestrials. Yo. Yay, dude. I just came to find out that, that we are all technically living in Spain without the S. And sometimes I cry myself to sleep. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's... Dude, I've been watching yeah. this. Uh, there's this channel on YouTube, another channel besides Donut Media. It's this guy. I think he's a uh, Jama uh, Jama NYC, something like that. Jama NYC. Shauma, uh X X I or X A I O. Shama. M A something okay. like that. Gotcha. Or X yeah X A I O M A or X I A O M A. I forget exactly what okay. it is. But it's this uh, dude who grew up in New York, uh, white dude. Uh, he's been speaking Mandarin for over 10 years now. He mm-hmm. lived in Beijing for like a year. He speaks Cantonese. Super cool. Very well. He's like very fluent with Mandarin. He speaks Spanish. Um, very uh, specific dialects for certain places in the world. Like he went to a um, village in the Mayan region. Mm-hmm. I, I think it was, I, I forget exactly where, um, but it was this little Mayan village and he spoke their dialect to them. This is like a language that's only spoken by, I think, less than 30 to 40,000 people. He's just wow. like speaking their dialect with them. Goes to villages uh, over in Thailand, Indonesia, speaks like their specific dialects with them. He's a, it's a really cool channel, right? Mm-hmm. And it's kind of what inspired me uh, to get on this kick. Like I've been talking to you and Zaid about it the past couple of days. Yeah. Duolingo. Duolingo. I've been trying to learn like Arabic yeah. and all that. I must say, Duolingo is one of the strongest like apps out there yeah. for language. It's dope too because and it really, really, really breaks it down, but it doesn't make you feel dumb either. Because it's like not only, no, it's like you it's, get more than just the generic stuff yeah. too. It's so many other languages. Like right now, <clears throat> my my top of course is uh, Arabic, just because like you you're know, around it. I have a, I have a <laughs> lot of Arab friends, like, and so it just for me, aside from Spanish, and because I can already kind of speak Spanish a little bit, mm-hmm. um, like Arabic would just be. A, the, a really, really great plus. Yeah. yeah, it would be really cool. And then um, the next one on the list is Hawaiian of all languages. Ooh. Just because, like, if I ever go back, it would be nice, like, in a little local village yeah. or, like, a little surf town just to bust some shit out. Yeah, I mean, you love Hawaii. Yeah, and I love Hawaii. I love the culture. I love the history. Mm-hmm. I love all of it. Like, so that's super fun. Spanish, obviously. I tried to learn a little bit of Mandarin um, because of that guy, Jama NYC. Yeah. Or Shama. And um, yeah, the first lesson I took, I was like, there's no way I can do this right yeah. now, not with school. Because it was like, a, I think it was like Jiao. It's like Jiao and uh, Jiao are like two different words. Oh my. It's like, the, yeah. It's like the Iao and Ao, like represent yeah. two different things, which is kind of similar with Arabic, but the differences in Mandarin were even slighter. Like even I guess lesser yeah, than in a, in uh, a, than Arabic, so yeah. it, was, it was shocking. But yeah, they got like a whole bunch of really cool um, languages on here. You can learn Czech, Greek, Turkish, Japanese, and then they have like a whole bunch of fun languages like Klingon, High Valerian, Yiddish, a mm-hmm. whole bunch of other stuff. It's super cool. That is super dope, and that's something that's looked past, in my opinion. I think learn. one of the most attractive things about human beings is being able to speak more than three languages. We should. I'm, I'm adding Navajo to the <clears> list, <throat> just because that's dope. Yeah, Navajo, or should I do Navajo, or should we do an entire podcast in Swahili? That'll be like a two minute podcast. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, answer to me. Answer me this though. Riddle me this. R- riddle me this, man. Um, so, on a scale of one to ten, how challenging was like Duolingo? Like, did it surprise you? Do you mean Arabic or Duolingo? Like- Duolingo in general, because I, I've I, the reason why I say this is because I've used other methods of learning the language, and it's always it's it's not deep enough for it to be considered learning a language like it's okay. just so basic to where yeah because most languages it does not teach um, you the letters it does not teach it basically shows you how to learn it in your own language which is english yeah <clears throat> which so, is a very wrong approach in my opinion so i'll say this um they do try to teach you arabic through english perspectives but what i enjoy about it more is that it's there's a heavier emphasis on trying to understand it as Arabic and not as Arabic through English, Mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. Even though they teach it Arabic through English, they want you to understand it as Arabic. Yeah. And let me explain what I mean by that. So what you're talking about beforehand, where they just teach you, like, it's the translation course, right? Yeah. Those are for learning shit like, hi, how are you? Where's the restroom? Uh, how much does this cost? Like yeah. that's what usually courses like exactly. that are focused on, right? And numbers that's what and just um, like uh, human necessities. Yes, yeah. and I've been doing that the majority of my life with Spanish, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which is why Spanish was so hard for me to learn, because I just looked at it as a. Essentially, I I put I like here's how I summarize it as the algorithm was wrong, mm. because what I do is I start at English, I translate it to Spanish, and then I translate it back to English. Yeah, but right. So there's you're three supposed steps to do the opposite, right? Is that what you're saying? There's three steps involved in that. Okay. So what I did is I had to just turn off my English brain, right? And so I'm like, okay, now I only this is only Spanish. I'm not viewing this as like a what does that word mean in English? And then I like think about it, translate it, and then translate it back, right? Mm-hmm. It's just we're in Spanish, and then you leave it at Spanish. Like you attribute words. It's it's, it's almost like going back to being a baby. Yeah. Like that's like how I have to think about it, right? You hear someone say it. So my, like my method, for example, if I'm learning a new language where I'm like, uh, this is completely new, like Italian. Okay. It is fairly similar to Spanish because it's a Latin language, right? Mm. Um, but I haven't I know that I have an Arabic background and an English background. So I'm gonna utilize those. But not yet. Yes. So essentially what I do is since we have technology now, you could literally click on the word and it'll tell you like it'll say it in that language, right? Mm-hmm. And what you do is you let that marinate. Think about it truly. Okay. Because it was other human beings that made this language. Therefore, it has its own tone, has its own, yeah. yeah, it has its own, like, unique sound. You can actually maybe get very close enough, like, close to what your perception of the definition is, how you True. perceive it. And then once you marinate, you'd be like, I think it means, like, this, this specific sentence, I think means David ate the apple. So you go, okay, let's see if it is. And then you go to the actual thing. And then you see that you're off, but you got one word correct. And you're like, why, though? For some reason, that word sounded like this word. Mm-hmm. And then you break it down with a simple Google search. You can immediately tell that this is derived from this language. And it essentially, you could see like how this, this word transitioned into becoming this. It's true. So everything, you can hear it, dude. You can hear like the resonance or the tone of it. It's just, it, it becomes very clear because you have a background of maybe two languages. That it links with something else, but then you translate it into English and you go, ah, 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 that makes sense. Oh, okay. We're going to Japan this year, you know? Like, <laughs> Or it's like, here's the thing I like about Duolingo, and it helps a <clears throat> lot because with Spanish, right, you get comfortable because their alphabet is incredibly similar to that of English. Yeah. Or of uh, the English alphabet, right? The only difference is, I think they only have a few. It's like... um. They have a, uh, a regular N and then the N with the accent, or the uh, N con acento, which is uh, Ñ. Yeah. And then they yeah. have, uh, I, I can't roll my R, so I actually can't even pronounce the letter, but it's their, like, R, or whatever it is, right? Yeah. It's the double R, right? So when you say, uh, there's Pero, yeah. like P-E-R-O, and then there's, like, Perro, which is the... Uh, Perro. Yeah, Perro. Yeah, Perro. Yeah, which is, like, stands for dog. Oh, okay, okay. It's like P-E-R-O, I think stands for like a butt, like 
not B U T T. That'd be yeah. like culo is yeah. the street word for it, but like <laughs> culla. But um, pero is like uh, I went to the store, but yeah, I needed to go somewhere else afterwards. Like you'd say pero. Oh, so that's why, like, when we hear pero, like, but but like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, makes sense. Pero este uh, similar, uh, pero es similar, or sorry. Pero no es similar de culo. Uh, but is not similar to but. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're pretty good at like, you're just good at studying, dude. You're really good because you apply the effort in your own way. You find your way to do it and then you just dive in. That's the thing about studying, man. It literally took me like 20-ish to 21 years to figure out how to f- make a formula or at least understand how my brain works with studying. Because for different subjects, it works differently. Mm. And that's the annoying thing, is I wish it would all just be one formula. I could just read shit, Mm -hmm. look at flashcards, and then move on. But no, it's like, for certain things, I just, like, for example, uh, with Duolingo, right? I I wanted to come back to this. Since it's a different alphabet, I've had the luxury of being able to, like, have that, I guess you could consider it a word association, right? Mm -hmm. And so now I'm memorizing, instead of um, what the letter would be in English, I'm memorizing what the sound is in Arabic. Mm. And so when I see that symbol, I don't think of it as A, B, C. I just think of it as... Uh, Duh. Yes. Or Z. Yes. Yeah, gotcha. And uh, it's now I'm now they're adding uh, all of those. I, I, they're not called accent marks, I think. I don't know what they would be called in Arabic. Um, but, or it's like, a, you know how the when... The little um, uh, annotations... <laughs> not annotations. Freaking... Uh, it's like a like one of the examples I have is a jed, which is a the j. It looks like a little j kind of thing, but then there's a little line above the dot, mm. and then there's the d after it. The line, okay. So, so that little line the, signifies yeah. um, that it's just a short a, or it's one a after that j, and then you know the mm-hmm. d afterwards is fine. But if it was that little like j figure, then there's the straight line which stands for the double a, which is jed, yeah, not jed. Yeah, Jad. Like, so there's that's a, a totally different thing. You're gonna see when you read Arabic, you, you already noticed that. So there's gonna be like we'll call them accent marks. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, I don't know. I forgot what they're called, but um, there's gonna be accent marks. Some of them are on top. Some of them are on the bottom, mm-hmm. right? And they're very particular because they they fall on top of a certain letter usually. Those are symbols for how to pronounce this word. Yeah, because a lot of the words, like you said, in multiple languages. It's going to be the same word, which is kind of like Mandarin, where it's mm. just like you're literally changing one thing about the word. But it's essentially the same word if you were to just read it without the accent marks. What I also like about it, is it's kind of similar to German in that regard, because like the way German, the German language works is phonetically, like how you're supposed to spell stuff out is kind of how they say stuff or how they say stuff, you know, phonetically is how it's written out. Mm-hmm. Right. So if they have the double O's and then like the upside down U or whatever on top of words. Like, that's a signifier as to how to say the word properly. Yeah. Which is applies similarly to Arabic, mm-hmm. right? Like, one of my favorite things about Arabic right now is... Um, I love is, that you're so hyped. <laughs> ...is W and Y. Like, the letters W and Y yeah. crack me up just because of their application. Yeah. Because um, for certain words, right, like, uh, they wouldn't end with two U's at the end of it, right? Mm-hmm. So what would two U's literally be yes no you're doubling up a u it's a w so like if you're do you know what i'm talking about it's a little symbol it looks like an upside down six or like a nine almost but it's more curved i have to see it they all look like they all have well i yeah i I know when they all have (laughs) i'm like no imagine like imagine you know like a nine like this but it's more curved off to the side almost like a g oh Oh, uh, like a, a W. Wow. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, Got me saying, wow. That'd be like, um, what, what would a good example of that be? Like, uh, Ooh. what? Like, ja, or something like that. We'll go back to that J, J, with J. the I, or with the apostrophe yeah. thing. It, by the and way, then, it's pronounced Jim. That's how you. Jim? Jim. Oh, right. To yeah. Be, to be fair, I'm going to go to the Jim after this. <laughs> but, okay. One of my favorites is a uh, douche. Douge. It's uh the D. Oh yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the U symbol and then the uh, the J one. Yeah. Douge. Douge. <laughs> douge coin. You're such a douge. <laughs> you douge. You douge. <laughs> but yeah, the accents they're super cool because especially if you're like reading uh, Arabic books or whatever it is, um, 
the the top ones are <laughs> how do you even explain it? I don't know. Arabic is such a weird language. I don't even know how to explain it. It's but, like the top ones are modifiers uh, of like for example, if I said dog, right? D O G, mm -hmm. right? And I put um, an extension or not an extension, a a little bar, like a little slanted bar on yeah. the G, it would be dog, uh, dog. Uh. Mm -hmm. So that, that ending little... of the word, that means it's going up. Now I could put it on the bottom and it will change it. It would just be doggy. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're, <laughs> I don't know. No, because that, <laughs> at least if you were to like translate it to or compare it to English, right? Yeah. When you add that slant above, what that's a symbol, well, what that's a signifier of is, you're right, it's the ah sound uh, at the end, yeah. right? It's e. going up, uh, e. which is... Can, uh, e. Yeah, and it's like... Just uh, think of high and low. Like, exactly. Like that. That's literally how they thought of mm -hmm. it, too, because they're like, uh, doga, uh, or whatever it would be, right? That's what the A is. Yeah. Go up. Like, yeah. when you finish this word, add the A, like the up at the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, for those words I've been learning... With the uh, let's just go back to the J example, right? Mm -hmm. That short A at the end, that's the J, mm -hmm. and it's short. Like you don't need to make it long. That's what the double ones are for. So if yeah. that straight line was there, following the J, that'd be J. Yeah, but it's just J. Yeah, like that, J. It's super sick. But yeah. like basically any word, they could be like cat, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can add three different little slants, and then they're three different words at mm -hmm. this point. Even though you, they all sound the same it's just the extensions and how quick you say certain letters makes it the meaning also the I, definition i imagine writing that language without like a feather and like yeah. a quill and inkwell yeah and would be -da -da. i feel like that'd be so difficult like how do you get all of those specificities with a pencil that's just like a little flat line like it's a beautiful language dude it, and it's like, also, it's written, at least from the Western perspective, yeah. it's written backwards. And I got to say, it, you actually can pick it up kind of quick. Mm -hmm. Like with Duolingo, this is a whole ad for Duolingo. <laughs> this, so, like, Sponsor us, please. There were, dude, yeah. I would love to be sponsored by Duolingo. Duolingo, I'm, we're I'm so down. We're coming for you. We're going to send you a proposal here. Duolingo, I'm sending you a big proposal. We're yeah. huge fans. We literally love it. And I, I use it. I'm on, a, I'm on day three, soon to be day four of my streak. Sick. She <laughs> yeah. I get you. But dude, it's so much fun. Yeah. And it's actually like you kind of you pick it up. You do. Yeah. Because like um for example, I was doing a a, a progress report, mm -hmm. right? So what you do is um or what this thing was I uh I paid for the premium version. Okay. After only like 2 days of using it because that's how much I enjoyed it and I'm like I'm going to use this for a long time. I paid for the premium one. And when you get that, they're like, oh, we can do like a specialized report for you, but you have to take a, a quiz. Okay. I'm taking the quiz and there's way more advanced stuff than I've touched yet. There's like a, quite a few letters I don't understand. Ooh. But the cool thing is I can understand like 70% of the letters. So I'm able to like kind of fill in the gaps and guess what the word is mm. based on the suggestions that they're giving me down below. Right. If I was in the real world, I'd be screwed. I'd be absolutely screwed. Like no idea. <laughs> but like, cause you know, they down below, I have a couple of those guesses and I'm like, all right, I know that that would be like the B and, oh, and it's got that line. So that's the A. And then yeah. it's like, oh, when you add that thing over there, it's like, okay, so it's B A J, but I don't know what that final letter is. Oh, so it's probably going to be like Bahar or Bashar or whatever it's supposed to be. I forget exactly. I think the J's make like a almost a sh sound in some cases. You know what learning Arabic is like? Mm -hmm. It's like your brain has lats and you're training that right now. Yeah, it's it's literally <laughs> it's, just stop using your English brain because it won't make sense if you try to yeah, attribute things because to English. That's the thing. You feel blind at that point. Mm -hmm. you, you're like, whoa, I don't even exist anymore if I can't communicate. But that's how you have to feel. You're absolutely right. Duolingo, holler at us, please. Dude, please. I'm going to be sending you a proposal please. very soon. <laughs> They're listening to this right now. Well, I'll send you an, I'll send you a proposal well, after well, this. Well. I'd be, I'm way too excited to work with Duolingo if they would what, Same, they'd let us. dude. What? 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 I'm trying to learn as many languages, or at least, here's the thing. I don't want to, like, I don't want to be a master of all these languages, because I, I never will reach that point, right? Yeah. They say it takes 10 years to master 
or to be able to fluently speak Japanese. They say it takes over five years to fluently speak uh, Mandarin. Mm. I don't know how long they say it takes to fluently speak Arabic. I'm not going to be fluent fluent in all these languages. But if I can go on to a street corner, like let's say you and I, we go to name any Arabic country you'd go to right now. Uh, this very second. Like, okay, how about, how about this? Egypt. You're taking me to an Arabic country. Where are we going? Egypt. Okay, we're going to Egypt. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I want to be able to walk up to the dudes, like, you know, we're in the we're in the bazaar, yeah. right? We're just <laughs> out there having, which, by the way, I can spell that now. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look how happy you are. You're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I can do that shit. <laughs> it's like I read that sign. It's like, that says, I don't know what the first word is, but yeah. we're at the shops, yeah. baby. We're at the Grand Bazaar. Yeah. Oh, but um, I want to be able to walk in there. And just talk to the dudes, be like, negotiate some prices, shoot the shit, yeah. be able to call them Habibi on the way out, yeah. and have a good day. <laughs> just call it that. I just wanted them to be like, oh, not all Americans are stupid. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I feel you. It's, yeah. It, it's fun. It's It really is fun. Yeah, dude. It and it's super, really like is. I said, it's super attractive, dude. And like, when you watch those videos of the, the Xiaoma, or Xiaoma and NYC guy, mm -hmm. Like, the look on people's faces when he starts speaking their language and they're having great communications, they're like, this is so beautiful that we can talk back and forth, and you know, like, that an American actually gives a shit about us. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I want to give America a good name when I, yeah. when I finally get to traveling. So that, it's like, if I can yeah. roll up and not sound like a dumb American, that'd be great. Yeah, I feel you. That'd be A1. We're proud of you. Also, I mean, I could be more cultured and uh, more connected. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I could yeah. be a better version of myself. Yeah. I don't know Jesus. why you had to say the word culture, dude, because <laughs> culture, there's a, it, this came up a few days ago, but like culture and religion are not the same. Who's okay? saying that they are? A lot of people mix them up, man. They are. And well, even, some... even people of the culture. <laughs> But some cultures are heavily tied to, to religion. Like, for example, you could argue that American culture is actually pretty heavily tied to Christianity. I mean, look at our money. It says, in God we trust. Yeah. Yeah, but there, it does spark, I don't know, it just starts becoming like a... Like, certain aspects of religion starts getting confused with, um, like, culture and community. Oh, 100%. No and then doubt. you're like, okay, so now we're just basically saying that we're not individual human beings, rather, we're, like, for example, we could be, I don't know, a um, hundred Saudis in a room, okay, mm -hmm. and half of them are Muslim, half of them are Catholic. Let's just say that, I don't know. Really? Yeah, let's just put that out there as an example, okay? Is Catholicism actually that prevalent in Saudi? No, no, I'm yeah, just okay, saying, okay, no, this okay, is okay, just a like... hypothetical example. Okay, okay. I'm just saying, like, it's a strong culture, obviously. Yeah. Okay. And within that culture, there's going to be a lot of religious things happening, mm -hmm. too. As a crowd, you're going to see, uh, like, a lot of us can make the mistake of just quickly assuming that this is all religious. Right? Rather than just, like, a, a Saudi culture. You know? Mm -hmm. hey, let's just put religion aside. We're going to act the same. <laughs> because this is our culture. Right? But a lot of us have the mistake of viewing it as, like, oh, damn, that religion. Fuck that. And it's like, what the hell, man? Mm -hmm. That's not fair. Like... It's a huge room. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but we're, we're blind in that sense. Half the room yeah. is filled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a different group. It's of like, people. why ask questions when we can assume? You know, <laughs> it's just why know things when we can guess about guess them. Guess about them. <laughs> just perceive them how we want. It's, that's how society was for <laughs> thousands. It still is. That it way. still like, is, especially in the and it's it's it doesn't piss me off. It just makes me laugh. Like, it's like in the scientific community where it's like somebody uh, was on the JRE. They brought up an interesting point where it's like the scientific community is so against the idea of extraterrestrials that, like, you're essentially blacklisted if you just talk about them. Really? Or ask a question about them, yeah. Wow. Blacklisted, so, huh? <laughs> well, I mean, this guy, he he got blacklisted essentially within the scientific community on the Joe Rogan podcast, this German scientist. Yeah. Because he asked, he's like, why can't we talk about them? He didn't even ask if they were real. He was yeah. just like, why can't we talk about why they Yeah, oh, why he they said them. They he don't. said them. Yeah. Yeah, literally. And he was just kind of oh. booted. That, it's the most ridiculous thing. Yeah, on the that, is, that is pretty ridiculous. But right. he asked, he, I mean, it's a good point because he's like, I'm a scientist. And as a scientist, what I'm supposed to do, 
or what I'm told my job is, is to better understand the universe and the things that occupy it. Mm -hmm. So why is it that we just outright reject a potential of life existing off of the planet? Like, why is it that the science community is so outright against that? And he's like, I, I feel like we should at least be allowed to ask the question. You know, you don't have to participate, but you should be able to ask. Yeah. Right? And so this isn't like an aliens talk. My point is that's been happening for hundreds, thousands, if not all of human history mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of where we're just like, yeah, we could figure out the truth, but <laughs> nah. <laughs> Just leave it at womp womp. <laughs> I, I just I just picture that freaking podcast was just like a that um, Doctor Evil button. <laughs> just send them off to hell. Why can't we talk about them? <laughs> That's such a. These are some funny ass movies, man. It's very interesting. Whatever happened to Mike Myers? Canada happened. I don't know. I think he. I think he was just like I'm tired of being a. Being in the or looked at limelight, yeah. I think he was just like, I'm good. I'll yeah. Chill. What happened to Channing Tatum too? That's a great question. What, right. What did ever happen to Channing? I Tatum? I realized that this morning. I'm like, I'm gonna Google that. What Channing happened? Tatum just disappeared. What happened to Channing Tatum? Huh. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he's getting hate for something, or he got canceled, low key. What was his last movie? Uh, that, let, let's 22 that Jump Street, maybe. No, no, he did stuff after 22 Jump Street. He was in um, he was in that uh, Kingsman. He was in Kingsman? Yeah, he was in the second one that came out. Oh, what? I did not know yeah. that. He played uh, one of the American dudes in the mm. second Kingsman. Girl, lock them uh, doors and turn, turn them lights down low. Put some music on. No, he's been doing stuff. That's weird, though. Th there's there has to be a word for that effect. So he did small. F he did that. Was it a Pixar movie? Where you think people just went and disappeared? No, it but really, it's just unheard of. Like they're not really the front of the. Bro, he did the Lego. Mo I didn't even know the Lego Movie Two was a thing, but apparently it came out in 2019. Oh, guess we're gonna have to watch that. Right? Yeah, they had Smallfoot. He did a Lego Movie Two. He did also a movie called Dog. D O G. D O G. I don't boy. think it's come out yet. But yeah. That's yeah, he's been doing. Well, sh he's glad doing to know shit. that he's doing shit. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's just not the right. not the head or face of anything right now. You know. You know what? And I was having a same or a similar thought, like, yeah. but with a different celebrity. What happened to Jennifer Lawrence? Oh yeah. Right. Like after X Men, what happened? Well, it was was X Men her last thing that she did? Well, it was probably the second Hunger Games or something. But no. Well, I mean, which one? You mean part two for the third movie? Yeah. Yeah, what is she doing? Like, I feel like she's just dropped yeah, off just the face of the planet. Yeah, I thought Man. American Hustle came out in 2013. Silver Linings Playbook came out in 2012. Wow. Jesus. It's been a long... Oh, she's been doing stuff. Okay, okay, okay. So, so she is active then. Yeah. Uh, she hasn't been doing, like, anything, like, super duper big, though, I think. Oh, no, Red Sparrow. I don't believe that did as well as I thought. But, no, she was in uh, Dark Phoenix, X-Men. Oh. That was the last thing she did that was, you know, in theaters. And then um, she's working on something. It's in post-production right now called Red White Water. She's doing another thing called Don't Look Up, another mm. thing called Mob Girl, and another thing called Bad Blood. Nice. So she's busy. Yeah. She's got shit going on. Well, it, that... I feel like there has to be a word. You know how like there's the Mandela effect, where it's just it describes a very particular like effect. Yeah, this is another kind of effect where, pe no seriously, people that were once like on the very front of the train are just now nowhere to be found or just completely forgotten, even though they are active. But isn't that crazy though? Like it hasn't even been that long. It hasn't. The last movie she did where she played a significant role was Dark Phoenix. That was two. Sorry, three years ago. I think that has to do with attention span. And dude, 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 it we are, all relate. Guys, back guys, to this, this is not. This is not. This is a. This is it not a joke. This is not a joke. This. this is not a joke. But we are all test dummies. All right. Oh, for sure. We're all under control by media. No, <laughs> no. All we are is. Uh... We are told what to follow and what not to follow. No, we shape society more than people think because. 
we shape society because companies come out with stuff like this and we buy it so much that other companies are like, hey, maybe we should be making stuff yeah. like that. And then, you know, that's how we shape the world is literally through our consumerism. You're 100% correct. And I will tell you how. Okay. I used to have a sales job. And I remember this couple walking in one day and they asked me, hey, so I'm just curious. Um, that phone has really good specs. Why is it $350? And I was like, yeah, it feels great to own a phone for 350 bucks, right? They're like, yeah, that's awfully cheap. And I was just like, hate to break it to you, but that actually is not cheap. You, sir, are just fucking used to what Apple tells you. It's so true. So when they sell you a phone for $1,600, you now think that that is just a reasonable price, and that is, the, that is around the range of prices that you should be looking. But at the same time, you can plug this into a mount, mm -hmm. and it can be your computer. It really can. So like that's that's why I get why Apple and Samsung, yeah. you know, they charge high prices for phones because yeah. their capabilities now. Yeah, but are Samsung, so ridiculous. Samsung is still a little bit a little bit cheaper than iPhone. Quite a bit cheaper. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think I know why. So Apple has the right, and I I am an Apple fan, not because of like I I honestly hate how much they charge, right? Because you know what's in their hardware. Their hardware is nothing special. Okay. But I will tell you why I pay for it. Their software integration yes. is phenomenal. It's better than anybody else out so there. So imagine this. Samsung is obviously powered by Android. Android is a universal platform that offers different um, patches and versions for all kinds of phones, whether it's LG, Motorola, HTC, whatever it is, mm -hmm. right? So building a software, obviously, if you can build one software for multiple for the same device over and over again all you're doing is you're making the software better over the over a, a lengthy course yeah. right android they're making different softwares for different phones constantly therefore they're not focusing on one software anymore which is why they have very terrible software integration that's true that's a good point yeah it's a very good point and yeah so i, I would say with phones the iphone is just it's I wouldn't say undefeated. It just works seamlessly if you keep upgrading. <laughs> it's true. Just upgrade your hardware no, you whenever they come out. You can even use every your two old years. shit. Like. You can use your old shit, but I would say I found it that upgrading every two years is perfect. It's not necessary to upgrade every year. I would say for like a laptop, yeah. like once every four to six years, mm -hmm. you're going to be good. Yeah. And what's even great, what's greater about the laptops, unlike the phones, is that with the laptops, after four years, you can swap out the battery. You can swap out the RAM. If you want to, you could probably take it to somebody and they'll put a whole new processor in there for you. Mm -hmm. And it'll probably work just as good, if not better, than when you first got it. Yeah. So, like, that can last, hypothetically, an extra two to five years. Very true. Like, five, I mean, that would be having a laptop for ten years. You're really pushing it at mm -hmm. that point. But, like, with these, the most you can do is swap the battery maybe the ram yeah like maybe and you can't get more ram you could just get the same stick that you had in it before exactly so because everything's thought of like that's why it works seamlessly because everything's yeah. working together perfectly but yeah it was not it was it was a cool thought dude yeah. <laughs> apparently fucking oh man we need we need we should wrap up this podcast yeah. after this topic but man uh have you heard about the uh processor chip shortage yes of course GPUs, so, RAM, everything, dude. So yeah. companies like Ford and um, GM, they've had to slow down their production heavily for vehicles because they can't get these chips. Yeah. Tesla uh, is getting quite a few of the chips, but they might have to slow down production soon. And allegedly, do you know what one of the biggest problems for it is? I'm going to have to say... Labor workers? The shortage? Bitcoin. Bitcoin? apparently wait explain this what so a lot of these processors allegedly yeah right and there's a couple reports you can read about it online um i can send you the links you can put <gasps> in the description if you want mining yep motherfucker i don't know if you've noticed but tiktok tiktok there's a lot of people that are like i will show you how to transform your life overnight oh, all you yeah. need to do is build this rig in a fucking and i'm like okay so now you're just do that whole mining thing. But continue, please. No, no, I'm, no. I'm, I'm no it's mining. Off. You're 100% yeah. right. And uh, 
even crazier, I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, yesterday the Bitcoin or just the whole market in general dropped almost 15% some odd. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you know why that happened? Um, I'm just going to have to assume someone pulled out billions of dollars. Yes. Is that what happened? Do you know who? No. Is it a CEO of some, some sort of I company? don't know if Tesla pulled out their coins, but I know that Elon Musk said that they're looking for an alternative to Bitcoin because Bitcoin contributes so much of the, um, or contributes quite a bit to the CO2 problem. And since, you know, that's what they're trying to avoid, even though they generate a lot of it through the manufacturing of their vehicles, that's a whole different story, even though they're probably the best in terms of EV manufacturers for mitigating that. Mm -hmm. Anyways, um, they're like, we want a different Bitcoin or different altcoin, excuse me. Yeah. If we're going to, continue to work with this right so now everybody's freaking out because they want to figure out which platform tesla is going to launch and grow because that's how you make millions of dollars overnight mm-hmm. right so when they said that they dropped bitcoin thousands of people millions of people dropped bitcoin that's why the market took a shit that's why all the other coins which are um they get their value partially generated through bitcoin's value they dropped a lot too right not surprising the crazy part is when you read into the story and you research about it, mm-hmm. some of the lengths people are going to to crypto mine. Did you know that in certain countries in the Middle East and in certain regions within the Middle East, they are losing power and having continuing rolling blackouts? And do you know what they're being attributed to? Crypto mining. The nation's citizen, wealthiest citizens are using so much power to crypto mine That they are literally taking it away from everybody else in the country just so that they can mine and generate enough crypto. They pay the government so much money that they say, all right, just cancel everybody's power for a couple hours to keep us running. Right? Because they can only generate so much at certain times of the day. So they're like, all right, when uh, we're at the lowest point, we're taking all of it. And take the money. Like, you can have it. We're going to keep mining crypto, making more. And I don't know, man. Dude, somebody in the U.S. just bought a recently closed, I think it was a coal power plant, and they started it back up again for crypto mining. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the craziest shit. It's like the craziest bad uh, bad guy rich dude thing you've ever heard of yeah. in your life. He's like an evil... <laughs> it's like polluting Beat. to make cryptocurrency. Yeah. Dude. Like, uh, I don't know, man. We we gotta be. We can't be as selfish as we are. Present today, well, people are so selfish, man. Dude, if you're buying power plants to crypto mine, yeah, you're you're on a different level. Like, I don't know if you want to call that greed. It's greed. It's well, yeah, monopolizing. But... It's on the way to monopoly. That's what you're trying. Like, it's all the same. Like extreme ideas. Yeah, but if any country was if any country was really smart, they could have already monopolized crypto. Which, yeah, I I have my theories, but we don't we don't need to get into that. Yeah, it's it's, it's all good. But you know what you hood. should get into more episodes of the Two AM podcast. Exactly. Thank you very much for joining us uh-huh. on this special episode today. You guys know where to find us. We are on YouTube. We also have a Two AM Clips channel. Did you hear? It's crazy. Since when? Since forever, dude. We have Sheesh. all of our clips on there. We're trying to get funny, juicy, cool. Juicy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's a lot of depressing episodes, too, you know? So Wow. Whatever floats Sad your boat. <laughs> no, no, we don't. We don't. We don't. But anyway, guys, you know where to find us. We are also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor.fm, Libsyn. We are on every major platform you can think of at the 2 a.m. podcast. Also... Please follow us at the Instagram at the 2 a.m. podcast. We also have a TikTok. Everybody, go ahead and follow that. We are slowly rising on there. We're trying to get really funny and show you different sides of us besides podcast episodes on there, too. So stay tuned. Go get talked with the 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah, podcast. guys. All right, go hit that like, subscribe, and turn on that bell notification button so you never miss an episode. Yeah, please. Just like, you only got to press it once, too. That's the cool thing about it. Yeah. Just one little click, like a little, it's good to go. Exactly. You're already set up. I trust them, dude. They're going to send it to all their family and friends. Sure.